Um, good afternoon. I just, as you can see, my uh, title for my um, presentation is slightly different from that dry, terribly unappealing thing that it used to be. Um, yes. So, um, do, I will say that the presentation is slightly, probably a little different to what's advertised. Um, and as I go through the presentation, you'll, you'll understand why. Um, so I hope you get something good out of this. Um, anyway, so at the beginning of the year, Victoria University of Wellington Library embarked on what we thought we decided think, felt as an ambitious plan to implement a new digital asset management system. Um, the cornerstones of the new system would be two, ex two existing collections, our institutional repositories, and the New Zealand Electronic Text Collection. Uh, driving the need for the new system um, was outdated infrastructure and a need to implement digital preservation for access as uh, one of our requirements of um, what we were attempting to do. I had hoped at this point to, to be at the stage where I could share with you more of the progress on what we had developed, um, including screenshots and potentially even a live demo sort of thing of where we had got to. Um, but sadly, as is sometimes the way with projects, um, we're not quite there yet, um, which does mean this presentation isn't going to be quite what I originally intended. Um, I will say that the, one of the main reasons is we did a nice lot of requirements and we had a, we had a idea of what we would want to do um, and then we got the responses and chose one that didn't fit in with quite what we planned. So we had planned to go to a cloud-based service and in the end the service we wanted, we chose was um, internally hosted so we had to go through the whole process of setting up servers and going through that, which has extended the time frame for the project. Um, yeah, so it's not quite going to be what it is. Um, there will, however, be kittens uh, and maybe water. I was told, um, I was suggested that maybe I should go, since I wasn't going to be completely going with screenshots of everything, that I should go completely esoteric and have completely random um, slides so that we didn't get um, PowerPoint death of brains in the audience. Um, I have gone a little bit like that. So there won't be too many informational PowerPoint things, but there might be things like kittens. Um, yeah. So, um, basically in the last few weeks, I've had to sit down and ask myself, what can I share with you guys? And more importantly, what would I, if I was you, um, would like to hear? Um, I had developed a sort of presentation around that, um, but it got changed at the beginning of last week when we had that little um, earthquake it sort of actually impacted a little bit quite heavily on what I want to talk about. Um, so there is going to be a little segue into recent events as we go through. So basically the progress, um, so basically in this presentation I'll cover the progress we have made a little bit so far. Also some of the learnings the project um, has, team has come to and, um, and yeah, what, and then maybe a few other things. Um, so basically, where have we got to? Um, after an intense time where we set requirements for project, we put out a call for response to a request for tender and evaluated a number of responses to that request for tender call. The library selected Rosetta from Ex Libris as the application at the centre of our digital assets management system. As you can see, Ex Libris. They like to brand everything. Um, it does mean that Victoria University is now um, uh, the first tertiary um, library in Australasia that is going with one vendor to do or did their digital asset management system, their um, CM, their, and their library management system and the discovery. So we're on the Rosetta Alma Primo integration sort of loop, um, which is interesting. Um, we did select um, at the start of it a name for it, which I'm going to share with you, which is um, Wairito, which means deep water. 
And it's quite been apt, as often we felt we've been treading in deep water as we develop the new dams. We're um, currently working quite intensely on the workflows um, that will allow us to put things into the new system once it's going. Um, actually, and this is where we sort of segue a little bit into um, the last week and um, the earthquake and the effects on having a major thing happen to your work team at a very integral part of the time of the project. Um, so at the moment, um, a fun, uh, at the moment um, we're really, really heavily involved and in, um, if you don't know that we're outside, we've, we're not, we've been locked out of our library and our workspaces since the quake and we won't be back in probably until the week after next. So it's interesting. Um, yeah. A fundamental core, project, core of the project is digital preservation for access, and we've restricted access to the physical resources. The, resources. the importance of digital and its longevity has been reinforced within our community in the last week. Indeed, a number of academics have already commented on the ability to access digital collections. Um, this is sort of highlighted to me, over the, especially the, the importance of a rigorous digital preservation strategy, um, which we are trying to achieve in the dams. Um, the team within the library has done an amazing job in maintaining momentum on the project at a crucial point in it, um, while working from a remain, uh, range of remote working um, workspaces. Um, the team for the project is mainly based in Rankin Brown, which I've said, um, which is closed and will be open. 5th of December is the latest. Um, that means the team has been juggling project work along with core business and doing so from off-site. Um, I just want to sort of delve a little bit into how this works with um, telecommuting and, and that off-site work for something like this. Um, we'd set up, we had thought we'd set up for off-site work um, everybody and we had gone through some plans about, you know, as you do after Christchurch and everything um, previously, what would happen and you make plans and we'd set ourselves up so we thought we were in the right spot. Um, but what we found out very quickly is um, we hadn't quite got there. Um, so we initially had to work on ensuring that people um, could get could actually do the jobs they were doing. Um, this meant a lot of working on VPNs and remote accessing and trying to actually get in because the project where it's at at the moment is a lot of, it's all behind firewalls within the internal structure and it's all linked to where we sit within our building. And as we aren't in there, getting people into that was the problem. Um, and we've worked through it and our team has been quite, um, quite good and, and has, has done a lot of work amazingly well from their home lounges. Um, and I just thought I, there was something that's impacted on me so I thought I'd just sort of bring that up here. Um, so we'll get back to the project, hence the kittens. Um, as always with implementing a new system, there are numerous challenges to come to grips with. Um, intellectually, we've had to come to terms with, with the new system, how it deals with assets and the digital preservation concepts that underpin it. Also, there's new scheme, new metadata schemas to learn um, and new ways to look at workflows. Um, we had to look at our current collections and see how they are configured um, what's the underlying architecture and what it can do to fit within the new system. Um, there's been a lot of looking at um, what, revisiting some of the old choices with, this, um, with things like our legacy heritage collections in the New Zealand electronics text collection um, and seeing what's applicable and how we can bring that over. Um, one of the more complex elements that we are encountering is in configuring the NZETC to ingest is the very um, varied ways that we shove, we um, put things out there to people. So no single item within the NZETC has a um, singular 
makeup. Like we can't say that all items will have X, Y, and Z because they might have X, Y, Z, and then A, B, C, and D, e, F. So, and many of that is linked to the fact that it is um, at the moment um, a very heavily um, focused on one core element, which is the texting TEI, which is text encoding initiative, which allows for um, deep, deep um, research within to a text. Um, but then from that we've got a varied other things like so one text might have page images for every page, other ones might just have um, images that have been cropped out and no page images at all for um, things and some of them have like in recent years we've been doing concentrating on capturing all our images in TIFF form but previously we only have maybe um, JPEGs or, or GIFs GIF images, images for bits. So there's a, it, there's a complex um, process of merging in what we've got and then massaging it into a shape that we can then ingest into the new system. Um, there's also the complex linked data authority um, system that highlights people, places within the NZETC works that we've got to work around. Um, with the way that the new system works, can we how do we ingest that into that and how do we maintain it? Um, what do we do for the workflows for that? That's one of the things that we're trying to work through at the moment as it is fundamentally different. Um, also, um, yeah, so one of the complexities that um, we've been most keen to address is the um, links into the NZETC. Um, we're aware that there are thousands of links from numerous sources into the NZETC, and um, we're trying to be conscientious library land um, citizens, so we don't want to break them um, as much as possible. But the new system doesn't um, really lend itself to reusing the old URLs, so um, we don't, we can't do one-to-one -one matching. Um, so we're going to be having to. Um, find um, out what we can do to bring those over. Um, so we've been taking a sort of a green fields, um, a green, we, we, what we've, one of the things we've been doing has been to um, first of all put everything into the Internet Archive, so we're working with taking up a subscription to Archive It to ingest all of the NZETC and all those sites into it. And then as we work through, we will be going through and um, working on um, uh, mapping and links and redirects to say, when people come from this link, where do they go? So that's another aspect of what we're working on. Um, so we will be actually ending up having a sort of a green fields effect with um, new URLs for everything, but we are working on trying to make sure that we preserve the links in and we match them across, match them to and fro. Um, this does mean that we have a lot of work of looking at, um, and as we're doing this, we're looking to see um, what, what will come forward in the future. So it's a lot of not just planning about taking old things in, there's a lot of, well, when we make this decision now, how are, how's it going to impact in the future? Because I think um, from what we've discovered in looking at this, and it's something that I'm very aware of, is that um, we tend to do some of these projects and we plan for the now and the short term and there may be a little bit of medium term of um, how we long we're we going to maintain it but we don't tend to think often about an exit strategy for when it's, the technology gets overcome, the platform becomes not fit for purpose, and whether the choices we make when we're setting it up are going to make it easier or harder for us to then take those things from an existing place and put them into a new one. Um, and at the moment, we're in a complex position where we're, like, we're trying to take some old decisions where that will and they're complex and fit them into a new one. So as we're doing that, we're looking to see how the decisions we make now mean when in 10, 15, 20 years, when Ex Libris is no longer functioning or you know, some new, newer, newer digital preservation system comes along that's going to 
do everything we want and is much better and is open source or something like that, how easily is it going to be for us to take the decisions we make now, take them out and then put them into the new thing? Um, so yeah. I'm not sure why I've got digital planning, digital preservation there. It's probably because I was a, fun, a pointer for the fact that a digital preservation is important for everything. So anyway, um, in conclusion, I know it's a little bit short and that's mainly because I have, don't have quite as much as I had hoped and I do apologise for that to share. Um, we are on track to deliver our new dams next year and probably hopefully next year at this time I, we won't be treating so much water but we'll have dived fully into the wall, into our into our Wairito system and we will be exposing new collections in new ways and um, you'll have seen uh, see what we have done and hopefully we'll find it uh, good so yeah thank you very much questions yeah, time for questions. Hey, Michael. Um, I just thought it was really cool that you're using um, Internet Archive the way you are. And I just wondered if you would uh, expand on it maybe for the audience a bit more, because I think it's a use that more people could make use of it. Um, and I'd like to hear yours a bit more. Um, yep, so one of the things we were like, we we're all about digital preserv... It's an, it's an interesting aspect of, of it, is we're introducing the dams to do, um, to make sure that we've got digital preservation right for us at the beginning. Um, and one of the processes we're using is a free third party, well not a free for this, but as a third party resource to digitally preserve our old things because they're more set up to do that. Um, this, um, this, is a, this is the progress we've made so far in ingesting. So the Internet Archive does its big crawls and it comes along and, and just randomly grabs things. But if you've got a big and deep complex site, they just sort of skim it and your stuff won't be in it as much. So they've got another service where you can archive specific collections and do specific things with it to um, put things in. And so we chose to do that and we took a subscription. And at the moment we're running a crawl across the NZETC um, to ingest it, which is gonna end up at about 1,600,000 documents, which is basically web pages and um, images and your, and JPEGs and all those sort of things. Um, and it's been going for three months, and it's probably going to take another two months to finish um, for the way they set it up. Um, but it's really, it, one of the things that's really useful actually after getting into that is that um, it, scroll, it crawls not only your site but links into and out and looks to find ones that you should that you should put in there and other ones. So there's got a list of exclusions and inclusions from a different websites. So one of the things we've um, identified from that is we'll be able to take um, the reports that we'll generate from that about what's been linked to, to and from and use that to double check what we think are linking to and from to do that marry up. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really, it's been quite easy to do too and it's really useful. Where's my kittens? Where's my kittens? Here's my kittens. I'm not asking this on behalf of my neighbour. <laughs> um, Michael, I just wondered. Is the um, NZETC not already archived in the NDHA? Um, as mu I don't know, Ross might be able to answer that question. Not, the, it, not in a very public way that we can get access to. Um, so with the, one of the benefits for doing, it, doing what we're doing is they will then package up our end result into an archive um, 
into a into an archive of all standard for di for digitally preserving your website, and then we can pull that out. So in the long term, our plan is to let them archive it in there. They can transform it, and then we will in re download it and re ingest it back into the Wairitu and probably use the open source Wayback Machine to be able to show it again through our own internal systems. Um, but for the NDHA, we did do have worked a little bit with the National Library to try and um, do digital preservation and preserve whole sites in that complex manner in there. But like um, the Internet Archive, I believe that the level of um, skimming that they did for capturing things like the NZETC was at didn't capture everything. It was a very high level. They didn't because it, yeah. Not trying to, yeah. Uh, mm. I won't have a seat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they need to mic up the, the, um, the entire audio auditorium. We should pass that on to Papa. Put mics down. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, Michael, I was just thinking about your solution and the fact that Rosetta is good at preservation processes and reasonable at digital asset management system, but is not a front end, um, and that part of your difficulty is going to be uh, for your end users actually having experience where they can still interact with the New Zealand Electronic Tech Centre collections. Um, so I'm just wondering, and I think you know, we've talked about a little bit, is, is now the time where we should be thinking nationally about those text collections and thinking about a, um, a um, building user experience right across all of New Zealand's uh, text collections, and then your requirements that are just for NZETC would be so much more secondary and would take some weight off yourself of having to deliver uh, a front end if we combined them all and built that. We've talked about for a while that um, corpus of text that we could use for um, nationally for text mining and so on. Um, yes, sounds good. Um, I think, yeah, one of the things I probably should mention, yes, it, the um, Rosetta the Rosetta system is, is primarily being used as a um, deep archive for digital preservation um, and is not so robust on the front end, um, so it will look to expose things through the Primo um, discovery layer. Um, so one of the things we are aware of is that we're going to do, have to do a lot more development on that user experience um, in the end. Um, because we're doing the green fields approach, um, we will have for a time um, dual systems, so we're not going to take down the NZETC or our IRs until we are confident and comfortable that how we are then exposing it through the new system is the right way and as is, is, is everyone, the user is getting the right experience. Um, integral to that, as they tell us, is the APIs. So we mean that we haven't. Um, it's one of the next stages of the project is exploring what the APIs actually do, so we can look at those front-end customizations. And I imagine that using the, there will be a little bit of work that in there that will end up being able to share it across, so that if other places look at APIs, and you know take out that what you're talking about is going to have to. There's the, the same work. We're going to have to do the same work anyway. If, if you get my meaning, because we're going to have to do the APIs. If we do the APIs to feed out to a national one, we're still doing the APIs to feed out to what we need to do. So it could be, there's that, but it won't be, so there will be duplicate. Does that make sense? I think. Yeah, although one option could just be to give your archive a dump to um, Digital New Zealand and say, here, could you um, make us a front end? <laughs> um, we could, I guess. Um, I'm not sure how much they would like us doing that, but... It was kind of a bit funny, but serious too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're a public library who has added catalogue records for all the components, the, the contents, the electronic tax collection. Yep. Um, so we've, we're now able to start 
telling people they, they can get these obscure bits of New Zealand published material direct. They can read, they can find it in our catalogue and go and read it straight away. Yep. Um, will those links be broken at some stage? Um, potentially. will have to be remade. Um, so we're hoping with our redirects that they won't, they, the way we want to do the redirects is they won't directly be broken. Um, you'll be fed off into a, to either the closest new thing or to, um, off to the Internet Archive. Internet Archive. Internet Archive. Um, but one of the things we do have on our, on, our, on our plans is before we get to that is we will be looking to have um, a bulk pace where you can download the um, catalogue records for them and replace them. So we're looking to make sure that we do have, um, you know, that, that where you've got the records already, we will be minting new records and they'll be easily downloadable. We did this through Kotui, so yeah. we didn't actually have to do a great deal. But so Kotui wouldn't have to do a great deal either. Hopefully not. Yeah. If we get it right. Okay. We're trying to get it right. <laughs> okay. We're still working on it. <laughs> but yeah, that, we're, 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 we are really well aware of the amount of um, records that are in different library systems that link into it, as well as the ones that are from in, in like um, Tiara and the ones that are in Wikipedia and the links all over the places that come in. Um, so we, we are we're very aware of that and we really don't want to um, break them badly. So, but you, you, you seem to suggest that this is likely to happen again in ten or fifteen years. Um, I would imagine the way that I see it. Um, so I'll probably get in trouble for saying that, but the nature of digital um, digital projects like these collections and things is there's always a flux of change, and there's always new things that come along. And I'm not sure that it with the best will in the world that you can create a system now and mint um, handle.nets or you know persistent URLs that will all go always go to that, that you can't say that in 10 to 15 years those won't be broken with um, people going along and saying, well, the system that we've got doesn't fit anymore, we need a new system, and the new system, can't, we can't transfer those over, so we have to do new URLs. So we'll just, um, we'll just have to build that into our workflows that we're always going to have to be being aware that things that are in our catalogue are pointing at um, yes, objects that yeah, may I, not be where they were yeah. originally. So that's, we'll, we'll always have to have cataloguers. Yes, we'll to always have that. to have cataloguers yeah. and indexes. Um, yeah. Thank you. Wrap it up. Yep. Thank you very much.